Africa. Truly one of the world's most amazing continents. Home to some of the planet's most magnificent creatures. Strange, uniquely adapted plant life. and hundreds of kilometers of untamed wilderness. Join Scott Welsh and his fellow students, Milan, Haley, Oliver and Emma, as they accompany Professor George Turner to explore one of Tanzania's crater lakes of East Africa. Tanzania lies on the east coast of the continent, overlooking the Indian Ocean. Bordered by Kenya and Uganda to the north, the Congo Republic to the west and Malawi, Zambia and Mozambique to the south. The country itself covers over 947,000 square kilometres, four times the size of the UK with only three quarters of the amount of people. Tanzania itself is home to over 45 million people and whilst poverty exists in some areas the people seem happy and grateful for what little they have. Many people make their living as merchants or shopkeepers selling all manner of useful goods either in town or by the roadside. One thing is certain, competition is fierce. Understandable as feeding a family is no easy task and if the children are not helping with fishing or harvesting they're collecting empty containers to fill with water from the local lake or spring. If visiting from a foreign country, locals are quick to wish you a good morning and to have their pictures taken, a rare delight in certain areas of the country. Tanzania is famously known as part of the Great Lake region, a worthy title as the three great African lakes pass through together. Lake Victoria lies to the north whilst Lake Tanganyika borders the west and finally Lake Nyasa skirts the southern border. But there is one lake in particular that the team thought well worth a visit. Lake Malawi. Malawi or Lake Nyasa is perhaps one of the most interesting water bodies in the world. At 580 kilometers across and 700 meters deep, this lake lies at the southernmost point of the East African Rift Valley. The most impressive aspect of this lake, however, is that it is home to more species of fish than any other lake in the world. And it is for this reason Professor George Turner is visiting this extraordinary location again. It's a really amazing lake. We're standing here at the north end of the lake in Tanzanian territory. It's a gigantic body of fresh water, one of the world's really greatest of the great lakes in the world. It contains hundreds of species of fish. There are all kinds of things. But all of these things are insignificant in comparison to the amazing biology of the cichlid fishes that live here. There are hundreds and hundreds of species of cichlid fishes here, most of them very closely related to each other. And we believe that one or two species probably got into the lake as it was forming several million years ago. And from that one, uh, one or two founder species, hundreds more species have developed within this lake. So my interest in these fish is to do with their behavior, it's to do with the adaptation to their environment, but above all else, what I'm really interested in is to try to find out how they are splitting into different species and why this one family, the cichlids, are so prone to diversify into many different species when there are all these other kinds of fish in the lake here as well. Whilst Lake Malawi is well worth a visit, there is another location deep in the heart of the African Rift Valley, which has drawn the team over 7,000 kilometers across the globe. The Crater Lake, Masoko.
This lake, as the name suggests, sits in an inactive volcanic crater. Unlike most lakes, Masoko is completely circular and takes on the shape of a cone, the centre of which reaches a depth of 43 metres, not counting the depth of the sediment beneath it. This lake itself is, is, a, is an amazing thing. We're right here in the middle of the African Rift Valley, um, which is obviously an area with a great deal of volcanic activity going on over the last few million years. And, one of, and part of that activity has involved the creation of Lake Masoko. And it's isolated from the, the, the environment round about it, but it does have fish in it, has several species of fish in it. But the thing that we're most interested in are the small cichlid fishes of the hapachromine group. Um, these fishes have, uh, live in the streams round about and must have been able to get into this lake at some time in the past. And now once they've got themselves into the lake, uh, they've evolved into new forms. So the ancestral type of, of cichlid fish that got in here was probably uh, a small fish living in very shallow water. Uh, and you can still find bright yellow coloured fish living in shallow water around this lake and these are probably quite similar to the ancestor of, the, of, of these fish. But you can also find two other kinds. There's a small one that seems to feed in mid-water, feeds on plankton more than the other kind and ranges right out into the middle of the lake and there's also a specialist deep water species and instead of having bright yellow males uh, in, like the shallow water one, it is dark blue, almost black males, and these fish only live down in the deep water. So that's, that's what we're here for, and uh, I think it's going to be an exciting project, and we'll find out some interesting answers over the next couple of years. Just how these fish made it into the lake in the first place still remains unknown. The answer remains a mystery, one of many the team are eager to uncover. The day begins in the early hours of the morning. The team prepare their equipment and head to one of three sites. Site A, Site B and Site C. Once there the team take to the water and catch some of the cichlid fishes in both shallow and deeper locations. Some use small nets and snorkeling equipment while others use more traditional methods. I've been putting out these gill nets uh, to Lake Masoko for the last 10 days trying to catch the haplochromine cichlid fish in deeper water and right now we are at site C which actually was the best site for catching fish. Once the fish are captured they are humanely euthanized in a clove oil solution. The specimens are then placed on a polystyrene board and the fins are erected with pins. Then they are photographed and stored for DNA sampling and further study. Joining the team on their field work is Dr. Hakeem Matola, a research scientist from the Tanzania Fisheries Research Institute. Part of my, my, my job, I also work with the ecology staff, marine ecology, freshwater ecology, biodiversity studies in the fisheries stock assessment. I help uh, to communicate with the local people because most of the local people doesn't understand English. So I use to translate them to Swahili language. Also I can use the local language, which also is my native language, Kyusa, it's called Kyusa. So for this way I can communicate well with the local people, all of them from the uh, authorities up to the local people. The team came prepared for camping. Fortunately, they didn't have to, thanks to Kasiba School. Kasiba School has around 300 students and 24 teachers, including biology teacher Mr. Michael Mahagyama. I have specialised biology in a Bachelor of Science okay. in diploma, biology and chemistry. This is a snack, so-called cobra. I found it near to teacher quarters. I killed it by beating 
its head without de destroying the, the old snake and putting it or preserving it in the bottle by using a form aldehyde solution. Whilst primary school is free of charge, those wishing to continue their education at this prestigious school will need to pay 20,000 Tanzanian shillings per year tuition fee. A mere £7.21 pence or 12 US dollars, a sizeable chunk of money for many locals. The facilities are fairly limited with most classrooms having only desks, chairs and chalkboard. The pupils are also encouraged to learn English and also to learn the value of hard work. Before school begins at 7.30am, the pupils engage in chores such as cutting grass and fetching water from the local spring. Nevertheless, the students do get hot meals for a long day's learning, prepared by the same cook who made dinner for the research team making use of an open fire, a pot and very simple ingredients such as rice, beans and vegetables. For over 10 days, Kasiba School was also the home for the research team, who were warmly invited by the school's headmaster. The team had to adapt a very different lifestyle, simple tasks such as cleaning the dishes, washing their clothes and even themselves involved much more effort and now required the nearby lakes. And perhaps the biggest change, sanitation. But with the breathtaking scenery and amazing wildlife, these changes were soon forgotten. After 18 days, the team had successfully processed 150 specimens for their research. Tanzania is a mosaic of protected areas. Over one third of the country is protected, resulting in numerous national parks, like this one. Mikumi National Park stretches over 3,000 square kilometers of scrubland, surrounded by large hills, inside of which you'll find all the iconic wildlife characteristic of Africa. Africa is truly a remarkable place and one of the most fascinating and exciting experiences in the world. Let it always be a reminder to appreciate the ever-fading natural world. <laughs>